Hello, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna be doing an exciting try a chapter with a bunch of my book of the month books. I've got requested to do a video like this pretty often or people will request a reading vlog specifically with a bunch of my book of the month backlist titles and I thought it's been so long since I've done a try a chapter tag and I feel like that would be a really great way to get an idea of what these books are like and to see what I'd be interested in picking up next and I just picked 10 random ones off of my shelves. I think this is 10, maybe it's 11, I'm not too sure but I picked 10. Some of them are more recent titles, some of them are from like a couple of months months ago. Um, and these are all ones that I'm very interested in reading. I have a wide variety of genres in the stack as well. But before we do get into the reading and the books, I want to say a huge thank you to Anchor Nano for sponsoring today's video. Anchor Nano is the number one charging brand in America, and they provide a wide range of product in power bank, charger, audio, and computer interface. You can charge it for minutes and use it for hours. You only have to charge it for 15 minutes and you can listen for music up to eight hours or play games up to one and a half hours. This charger works three times faster than your standard iPhone charger, and it can go from 0% to 50% in just 26 minutes. So they send this little one. It's a USB-C 60 watt charger. That is easy for traveling. And this one just plugs right into the cord and you can use it with most of your devices. I also really love how long these cords are, by the way. They're a lot longer than the standard iPhone charger cords, which is nice because you can use it from like all the way across the room. I will admit too that I was kind of a skeptic when I first got this because I was like, there's no way it charges three times faster than my normal iPhone charger. But I was completely proven wrong. And this thing really does charge so quickly. I even tested it with my AirPods and it charges my AirPods just as quickly too. Anchor Nano has had a huge impact on my daily routine because now instead of leaving my phone plugged in charging overnight, I can just plug it in like an hour before I go to bed or an hour before I go to work and my phone's completely charged and it lasts me all day. So definitely be sure to check the link in the description and thank you so much to Anchor Nano for sponsoring today's video. On to reading the books. These are the books that I'm planning to read for this video. I would go through them all one by one, but I'm gonna be talking about all of them throughout the whole video, so I'll put timestamps below if you are here to only hear my thoughts about a specific book. <laughs> and yeah, um, I'm just gonna lay in bed and get cozy and read the first chapter of these books, and I think I'll update you with my thoughts about halfway through when I've read half of the books, and it's just gonna be like a cozy time, you know? We're just gonna like hang out together. And also, of course, if you've read any of these books, please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on them, and also which one out of these that you think I would enjoy the most or that you would like to see me read first the most. I do eventually plan to read all of these, but you know. <laughs> The TBR pile is getting out of control. <laughs> Alright, 
it's been a little bit, but I got through six books of the first chapter of the books. <laughs> so the first book that I read the first chapter of is Ties That Tether, and this is a romance book that I've been wanting to read for a while now. This one was an October selection, so it was quite a bit ago. But this one's really interesting because it's following this Nigerian woman who is expected by her family to also date a Nigerian man. And in the beginning of this book, she's on this date with this Nigerian man and he's asking her if she like knows how to cook and how to clean. And he basically expects her and wants her to be this like perfect housewife. And she's kind of like getting freaking irritated with him. And she kind of like bursts at him with anger and it's like really funny. And then ends up meeting this white guy named Raphael and they have like sparks flying, but she knows that her family would be disappointed with her if she dates this man. I don't know, I feel like this book was really easy to get into and this is the one that I think I want to read the most out of all of these books that I just read. It's just like exactly the kind of romance book that I like because it seems like it's gonna be really complex and really interesting and almost like forbidden because it's against what her family wants for her. Also, since the love interest's name is Raphael, like of course I'm gonna be picturing Raphael from Jane the Virgin, like what the heck. Mm. And so far, I just, I feel like I'm really gonna love this one and I wanna read it immediately. <laughs> the second book I read the first chapter of is Girl A by Abigail Dean. And oh my gosh, I got 20 pages into this book before I realized this book doesn't even have chapters. I was just going and I was like, you know, this is a really long chapter. Like when is it gonna end? And then I flipped through and I realized it doesn't have chapters. Oh my God, wait, it does. Oh my God, I'm stupid. Well, um. <laughs> Okay, I only read the first 20 pages. The first chapter of this was really intense, really interesting. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit stupid and it was kind of hard to get into. Like the writing just feels very like dense in this book for some reason um, because the main character of this book is this girl who was abducted with her sister and we're following her now like as an adult with her point of view like after the situation but then we also get flashbacks within the chapter of like what happened when she was a child and when she was abducted with her sister and what happened with her real parents because I guess they called the guy father that had abducted them. I think it was like a religious kind of situation. This book says in the description of it, it says it's for readers of Room and Sharp Objects. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm still very, very interested in reading this. I also do love stories about sister relationships. I just don't know if I'm gonna be a huge fan of this writing style. And because the chapters are so long, it makes me a little bit nervous. But if you have read this book, let me know what you think because I'm definitely interested in continuing with it. And then I read People Like Her, and this is a thriller that I think is really interesting because it follows this woman named Emmy who is an influencer, and she's a mom influencer because her account is like about her mom. No, it's not about her mom. It's about her being a mom and like her kids and her family and stuff. And it's interesting because in this first chapter, we not only get Emmy's point of view, but we get her husband Dan's point of view. And he's immediately like, she's full of shit. Like none of her shit is real. And like, this is all bullshit. And so his point of view is kind of funny. And then it's weird because we also get what I'm assuming is a third point of view in this first chapter. And it's all in italics. And I think it's from like a stalker's perspective or something because it's like, was this the night that I decided to hurt you? Yes, it was. And it's all like intense. So I'm like, what is this? Like, what is going on? Like we get three point of views just in the first chapter. Like I'm pretty confused. But also I'm like, damn, is this another thriller that's about obsession of some sort or like a stalker? Because I just did a whole video on that. And if I had known that this book had that element to it, then I probably would have included it in that. So missed opportunity. The next book I just read the first chapter of is This Close to Okay. And this is probably my second favorite or if not my favorite that I've read so far out of all of these. This one was a December selection. So I feel like I've been wanting to read this one for months as well. But this one, I will say there's a major trigger warning for suicide because like the very first chapter in this book, our main character Tally sees this man on this bridge and he's threatening to like jump off the bridge and she's trying to talk him down and save his life. And she's able to talk him down and take him to a local coffee shop and they start to form this like really cute friendship. This book is so easy to get into. Like the writing is just very engaging, I found. And I already really feel like I'm connecting with both of these characters just within those first 20 pages. And I'm curious because it looks like the next chapter is from the guy's point of view. We still don't even know his name because he's being very private about his life and what's going on. And I don't know, I just, I really love this so much already. Like I really want to read this book right 
right now. I just, I don't think I expected to love it immediately as much as I do, so that's exciting. And then I read the first chapter of Pretty Little Wife. The first chapter was only two pages, so I didn't get much information from that, but it was just about this woman putting up some curtains and then she falls. Like, I don't really know. But the description of this book still sounds so promising and so interesting because it says, shouldn't a dead husband stay dead? And it says this girl, Lila, lives in an idyllic college town, but not everything is what it seems because a student vanished months ago and now her husband, Aaron, is also missing. And I don't know, it just, it sounds so interesting, but I didn't get much from that first chapter. So if you've read this, let me know your thoughts. And then the last one that I just read is The Kindest Lie. And this one, the first chapter was about like 10 or 12 pages. Um, this one follows this woman named Ruth and we're just kind of following her family in the Chicago area. And it takes place in 2008 and we're kind of following the moment where Barack Obama won the election in 2008, which is a really beautiful moment for their family. I feel like we don't really get a lot from that first chapter because I still don't really know what this story is going to be about. From what I understand from this Premise. It's about our main character overcoming her hardship of her childhood and growing up and it examines the heartbreaking divide between black and white communities and I think it kind of goes into the financial crisis of 2008. So that is interesting. The first chapter didn't give me too much but so far I really do like the writing style in this. Alright, so those were the first six books. These are the five books that I have left. I think I'm going to change into more cozy clothes because I'm still wearing jeans. Like, what the fuck am I doing? And I might take out my contacts and grab a poffridgey muffin because I got a muffin earlier today when I went to the freaking bakery. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna read the rest of these. <laughs> finished the last of the books. So let's discuss. The first one I just read was Things We Lost to the Water. And this one feels like it's going to be a very emotional and powerful story. In this first chapter, um, we only have a few pages in the first chapter, but it's following this woman who's a mother in New Orleans in 1979. And there's this hurricane warning that like comes over the area and it she kind of like makes a comparison of that to the war and how it's kind of like, I think it's kind of like triggering her and reminding her of the war that she experienced. And I just feel like this is gonna be a really beautiful story about like a mother trying to protect her sons. And then the next one I read the first chapter of was Infinite Country. This is one that I'm just absolutely obsessed with this cover. Like I think it is so stunning and just so beautiful. And this one was a selection from February. I forgot to say that this one um, is actually the most recent pick out of all of these because this was actually a May book of the month selection so this one has been on my TBR the shortest amount of time but it's one that I'm still highly interested in whereas this one came out in February and this one is about it's about our main character she's this young girl that's being held in a correctional facility for adolescent girls in Colombia and it was kind of cool because the whole first chapter is about her and these other young girls kind of planning their escape and like they don't allow any men 
in this prison because they're afraid that the men are gonna seduce the young girls or that the young girls are gonna seduce the men so the men are the bodyguards or like the security guards but they're like they're outside of the prison so there's only one woman who's like watching over them in the prison so it was kind of easy for the young girls to like overpower this one woman so the first chapter is just kind of about like how they're planning their escape and how they're escaping and stuff but this one sounds really interesting i actually looked and my library has this on audio so i actually put this one on hold as an audiobook just because i feel like this one would be a really great audiobook to listen to the next one i read was what comes after and i'm not gonna lie this is one that i had like literally no expectation for like i barely even re remembered what this one is about and the first chapter was only like three paragraphs long but i'm already like wait what like so intrigued from what i understand this is like a contemporary but it definitely has like mystery thriller vibes because the first chapter just starts and I'm, I'm assuming it's from like the mom's point of view and she's just like here we go here's some raw facts a week into his senior year my son failed to come home after football practice and she's talking about his he had this best friend named daniel on the morning of the eighth day after he'd gone missing daniel's childhood friend jonah was found dead in a suicide note he confessed to daniel's murder so like her son murdered his best friend and then committed suicide i guess and it said daniel was found then his body slashed to pieces dragged from brambles and partially claimed by scavengers that populate our woods so I'm like, excuse me, bitch, what? I had no idea that that's what this book is about. Or maybe I did and I just spaced. So I'm pretty excited to read this one now, actually. I mean, this one is pretty thick. Like, holy crap, it's like over 400 pages. Ooh, this author lives in Washington. That's cool. But yeah, um, what a first chapter. Like, it was literally only a few paragraphs long, but it started with a bang you know like that is exactly what i like in a book it's just it gets you hooked immediately like now i need to know what the heck and then the next one that i read is the lost apothecary and this one um was a march selection so this one was pretty recent as well i feel like this one is like the most outside of my comfort zone that i read out of all of these books today because this one's kind of like a historical almost like fantasy as well because it takes place in like the 1700s and in the first chapter we're just following this young woman who's like making these poisons for the men that are like doing bad things. It sounds like some badassery to be honest. I just don't know if it's like my thing but I think with this one um, I just put the audiobook on hold at my library as well because they have this there and so I feel like if I listen to the audiobook I'll have a better time because usually when I try to read fantasy like this my brain just like glazes over and I just don't I just like forget how to read words so yeah but I do I do think this one would be a very interesting pick I like the feel I like where it's going and then the last one that I read is true story this one was never actually a monthly selection but it was an add-on that I added on because it sounded really great <laughs> I thought this one was a thriller too, but I think this one's more of like a dark contemporary book. This one's interesting because we're going back and forth in time within 15 years of time. So in the beginning, we have a prologue that takes place in 2015 and it's like our, I'm assuming it's our main character being like, I'm so sorry that I never talked to you when you asked for my story. Like I should have told my story, but I wasn't brave enough then. And then the first chapter is what looks like this like screenplay or this script that's um written by our main character i think but yeah um it was a pretty cool first chapter like i liked reading about like the screenplay or the thing that she was writing and even though it doesn't give much away in the first few chapters i really like the concept of this book and so far i think it's really easy to get into but it's interesting because it says our main character alice is living helping other people tell their stories but she is haunted by the one story she can't tell and i think it jumps back and forth between 2015 and 1999 so yeah the bottom of this does say that this book is part psychological thriller part fever dream and part timely comment on sexual assault power and the very nature of truth yeah, I'm pretty excited to read this one still. Like, I don't really know. Like, I didn't get much from those first few chapters, but still very intrigued by this. So yeah, that is a wrap on trying out a chapter for all of these books. I feel like my top three books that I, like, want to read immediately after reading this first chapter is Ties That Tether, This Close to Okay, 
And then I'm kind of torn between what comes after and true story. Like these both definitely gripped me right away. I also see a lot of potential with people like her and I feel like this is one that could either go one of two ways. Like it's either gonna be really good or really lame. I feel like the ones that I personally felt the least connected with with the first chapter or at least like these made me the least excited to continue reading is probably The Kindest Lie, Pretty Little Wife, and The Lost Apothecary. I feel like all three of these, like their first chapters were just like, okay, or maybe they're kind of not my thing. With this thriller, I just don't know. You know, it was just, I mean, it's kind of unfair because it was such a short chapter. Like I really didn't get much from this, but for a first chapter, I just thought it was fine. And yeah, I think both of these books are really beautiful and they're probably gonna be really stunning. And Girl A, I just don't know. I'm so intimidated by this all of a sudden but yeah either way all 11 of these books are all books that I still would like to read very soon hopefully at some point I have this entire shelf right here and these are all of my book of the month books that are still unread like I'm just putting them all in this one spot so I just have to stare at them all right well that is all for this video so thank you so much for hanging out and for watching and of course if you have read any of these books please let me know your thoughts on them because I might need your help deciding what to prioritize and what to read next honestly reading all of these first chapters has got me wanting to scrap the plans that I have for my June videos because I want to do a video reading some of these books for a, a reading vlog now so <laughs> let me know if you'd want to see that. Thank you so much for watching as always and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye!